ladies and gentlemen. Baby. Baby. Ha <laughs> I'm so glad. This is. I'm so glad you're mine. Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ha! Ah, ladies and gents. I'm so glad you're mine. All right, this is Darius Rucker, or as some people pronounce the name Darius Rucker. You've heard this song originally by Al Green, but, you know, just can't let it go. Got, 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 can't let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a web browser. It's called Waterfox. Showed this a couple of months ago, and I'm downloading Waterfox because it's a private browser, and that's what it advertises itself as, and I'm going to load this up on my system while I'm talking to y'all. Y'all don't mind, do y'all? Now, there's a lot of things going on, so I just need to let y'all know what I'm doing because, you know, that's what I do. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have an individual. I'm, I'm working on his... Um, he did one of the summary judgments. I put the petition out there, the affidavit for summary judgment for you guys with foreclosures. And so he's working on summary judgment, y'all. And the court said, Mother, you can't bring this in this courtroom. The court added some case law. The court's case law ain't had nothing to do with the summary judgment. The case law, or the, the coast law that we added, the court added its own coast law, didn't contradict our coast law, but their coast law apparently is more valuable than our coast law. Ladies and gentlemen, they basically said that he could not do a summary judgment request in a non-judicial foreclosure. Can I show y'all something? Y'all don't mind, do y'all? This is one document showing that the note is secured by the deed of trust. Okay, the note is secured by the deed of trust. The deed of trust does not exist without the note, ladies and gentlemen. They're inseparable. Supreme Court just made that decision. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put Darius, Darius, I'm going to put him on hold, and I'm going to put you guys on hold because i got to call the young lady and ask her about that case. So y'all give me a second, okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, y'all just going to have to bear with me. The young lady said that she hadn't talked to the other young lady who has that information, who was on the call last week when the Supreme Court said the note and the deed of trust are, are inseparable. One references the other. Can't have a deed of trust without a promissory note. Go back and take a look. Deed of trust, the first thing it says, with reference to a promise to pay, I agree. So deed of trust and a promissory note are automatically linked by the language. Now, I haven't read the case, but I already know what they're saying. And, you know, a lot of people want to put down the Supreme Court right now. I keep telling y'all, Roberts, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the Supreme Court, but I'm going to tell y'all the way it is. Roberts has done all right as being the Chief Justice because he has erred on the side of the law. He deals with strictly, and I like this about the man, strictly the facts. Strictly the facts, ma'am, and nothing else. And because that's what Roberts deal with, now see, I'm, I'm away from the, the computer. That's why I'm talking so loud, okay? So I'm not sure if it was picking up my voice, so I talk louder, so I make sure it's picking up my voice. Uh, this is Regina and Angela, Renee and Angela. I said Regina, Renee and Angela. I, I, I don't know why Regina Bell came to mind, but Regina and Angela, Renee and Angela. See, still saying Regina. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is to let you know that the promissory note and the deed of trust are inseparable. Okay, but the courts have always known this. You can't just go into court with a deed of trust. A deed of trust doesn't evidence anything. 
It is the note that has to go with the deed of trust. The note is secured by a deed of trust. The deed of trust does not evidence the note. You need the note. That's the evidence that there is a payment owed. The deed of trust does not prove that somebody owes money. That's your argument. I'm sorry, they need the note. Can't just come in here with a deed of trust. And since they did not file the note, I ask that this case be dismissed with prejudice. You can't bring that deed of trust in here claiming that somebody is defaulted on a loan. What loan? Well, the loan number's right. I don't give a fuck with no loan number. What loan? Where is the contract? Did you sign the deed of trust? Oh, yeah, you better believe I signed that deed of trust. That's my signature right there. My signature. Okay, where is the loan? Didn't ask you about whether or not I signed the deed of trust. That ain't got nothing to do with my question. You ignorant mother. I'm sorry. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. What the courts do is they take you off subject. You have to go in there and knowing what the issues are. You have to bring forth your issues. Hey, uh, Renee, Angela, hold on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you what the court did with this young man, and I'm going to get into this video and show you exactly what we're doing. He filed his motion for summary judgment. He put in all the evidence that there is no issue before the court. There is no controversy. He put together that there's no way in the world they could ever prove a claim. That's what the whole summary motion was all about. The court did not hear any of the so-called arguments. The court said he did not have the right to do a summary judgment. He had to do a lawsuit. Pay attention to this. Foreclosure pursuant to a power of sale, deed of trust, is intended to be a summary in REM proceeding. It's already a summary proceeding, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on, let's go to the next one. In Maryland, foreclosure action is ordinarily a summary and rim proceeding. That's not just Maryland. That's around the entire United States. Non-judicial foreclosure act. Okay, hold on. Hold on, right here. An action in a mortgage foreclosure is strictly an in rim proceeding. And the purpose of a judgment in mortgage foreclosure is solely to affect a judicial sale of a mortgage property. Ladies and gentlemen, even if it's a non-judicial foreclosure, it's still a judicial sale of a property. Okay, a mortgage foreclosure action is not a judgment for money damages and therefore cannot be an action to collect the debt as required. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Y'all need to understand, a foreclosure action is to collect the debt. That's the whole purpose of the foreclosure is because they're evidencing a debt. Somebody failed to pay. Ignorant mother. Sorry about that. Pennsylvania, an action for mortgage foreclosures strictly an in rem proceeding. And the purpose of a judgment in mortgage foreclosure is solely to affect a judicial sale of a mortgage property. doesn't matter what the purpose is. It's the effect, the cause and effect. There's always cause and effect. Scientific method, cause and effect. You can't get rid of that law. That's a law of nature. In order for you to affect, pay attention, cause and effect, in order for you to affect a foreclosure, there must be a debt, a claim that somebody is in default. So, ladies and gentlemen, MRM proceeding is a summary proceeding. Let's find out what an MRM proceeding is. You guys don't mind? This is bankruptcy. Law Chicago. What is an in rem judgment of foreclosure? I don't know. Can you tell me? I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to let them tell you. Okay, thank you. In the last few years, as the volume of foreclosures has slowed in Illinois, the foreclosure courts have been processing the cases faster. Foreclosure cases that used to take one to two years have been speeding through the courts at a more regular speed of 8 to 12 months. More people recently have been having to deal with the consequences and end result of foreclosure. In Illinois, foreclosure courts can enter two types of judgment, court orders. The first one is an in-rim judgment of foreclosure. That means the judgment is only against the property, in-rim, against the property. That's why it's called in-rim jurisdiction. It allows the bank only to continue with the foreclosure 
process and get the house back and evict whoever is there. The lender cannot sue the person for money. Second type is in persona jurisdiction over the persona. See, that's why they need in rim, persona, and venue jurisdiction. Subject matter, ladies and gentlemen. Subject matter in rim and persona jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, because it's only for the property, pay attention. The in rim proceeding is only a summary proceeding. It really is just that simple. So because the foreclosure process, look, I promise you guys, nobody has come at the courts this way before. Go go and take a look. Nobody has ever tried to do a summary judgment in a non-judicial foreclosure and brought up the fact that it's a summary proceeding to begin with. That non-judicial foreclosure is a summary proceeding. Foreclosure is a summary proceeding because it's only against the property. It's a summary proceeding. It's not for money. It's a summary proceeding. It's not for money. It's a summary proceeding. Wait, hold on. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, we'll let you access the Internet since you're a web browser. Yeah, we'll let you access the Internet since you're a web browser. Okay, we'll let you access the Internet since you Look here, mother... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm hitting block. <laughs> I should be hitting always. I'll be loving you always until the day when the sun rises in the sky. Always. I'm not going to turn the music back on just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, let's find out what this is. Okay, we're going to go back one because it's going to bring us to our Google search. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I don't want to do Google anymore. Hold on. I don't want to do Google. I want to do goodbye. B I. G I B I R U. Goodbye, Rue.com. That's going to be my search engine from now on. I got to now put that in all of my, uh, what you call it, as my search engine, my major search engine. I won't be using Google anymore. Okay. Hold on. Now, I just put non-judicial foreclosure as a summary proceeding. Okay, that's all I put. Now, the unique thing about this particular browser, it takes the Google algorithm and it augments it to where you're not being mislaid. Okay? To collect damages on a property caused by a tenant. No, we don't care. Oh, that's summary proceeding. Eviction. Ah, summary proceedings, evictions, and summary proceedings. Ah, we're looking for foreclosure, though. Okay, this assumption is likely to lead to underestimating the true time for foreclosure. Summary proceedings, non-judicial, time, days, cost. Let's see. This is the World Bank document, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go here. I'm actually really surprised. Oh, no, they did a Google. This is going to Google.com. Aw. Okay, anyway, remember, it uses the Google algorithm. So for me, that worked. Okay, but goodbye, rule. Goodbye, rule. Goodbye, rule. Goodbye, rule. Goodbye, rule. Goodbye, rule. This is where I'm doing my searches from now on, ladies and gentlemen. I've been using it on my cell phone, and I decided I would do it here. To stay a non-judicial foreclosure proceeding against blah, 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 blah. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a summary proceeding. When a tenant shareholder defaults and does not show up in court for a summary proceeding, a co-op can no longer recover. Okay. Uh, let's see. Would classify some businesses engaged in non-judicial foreclosure as debt collectors under the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. This is a law that they were passing with non-judicial foreclosures as debt collection. This was 2002, Congressional Budget Office. I don't know what happened with H.R. House Resolution 5001. Ladies and gentlemen, do your research on H.R. 5001, because if non-judicial foreclosures are deemed and classified as debt collection, the whole game changes, because now they got to follow that law. Okay, foreclosure litigation has the 
in the district court summary proceedings. The final stage of non-judicial foreclosure is possession of the property. This, look at this, consumer mortgage defense challenge non-judicial foreclosure. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I knew I was right because the God I serve allows me to be right because he's my God. The God I serve allows me to be right. Now, look, this is consumer mortgage defense challenge non-judicial foreclosure in district court. Okay? Challenge non-judicial foreclosure in district court summary proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, summary proceedings. Summary proceedings in jurisdiction move quickly. The summons is issued. The hearing is usually 10 days later. Most consumers are served by mail, and the court may enter a default judgment for non-appearance, which usually provides 10 days before eviction order may be entered. These are non-judicial foreclosure, ladies and gentlemen. Non-judicial foreclosures are summary proceedings. And so, hold on, watch this. This gives me some cases. So let's go down here and let's look for that case. It's number one. Mama, I'm number one, they told me. So how could that be number one? This is the code. This is uh, civil, oh, no, this is court rules. So I believe this is Michigan court rules. So I'm not really concerned about Michigan court rules, but guess what I'm concerned about? Concerned about this word right here. If the consumer appears, the court will allow time to get an attorney to defend. Demand for a jury trial must be made in the first response. The jury fee must be paid with it. Although it is widely believed that the district court is not authorized to quiet title, the summary proceeding statute arms the district court with equitable jurisdiction. Okay? They have a summary proceeding statute, not a law. But just, you all need to understand, you need to understand the value of what I'm saying. Non-judicial foreclosure is a summary process. You really need to understand that. Some of you are going to have a difficult time understanding that. If it's a summary process, that means you can request a summary judgment. That's what it boils down to. So the court said that the individual must file a lawsuit. Ladies and gentlemen. Where did the court get that stupid bull from? Okay. Summary proceeding and jurisdiction. I didn't make this up, y'all. I wish I could have. I wish I could have, but if you guys pay attention to my videos, if I say something, if you think I've done research on this stuff, <laughs> please, I have not done no research on this junk. Okay. Consumers can challenge improper foreclosure and lending practices, and in the process, retain possession of the premises. Okay, well, that's exactly what the notice of default judgment, looking for summary judgment. That's what that's all about. So, again, I know what I know. Or let's just say it was meant for me to know what I know so that I could tell it to those of you. So, look, I have a motion I have to go do. I've already given you guys the foundation of this. Uh, I will be finishing with that uh, challenge motion, challenging statute motion, but you guys are going to have to be patient. Like I said, this is the time that I slow down. I'm helping this person with their – because they did a consult with me, So, and I don't do documents for people, but because this is a precedent-setting matter, I'm helping this person with the – appeal okay that's what this is i'm helping the person with the appeal by the way i promise you if i had gone to google i would not have found what we just found i guarantee you if i had gone to google i would not have found what we just found now i clicked on this and let's see if the world bank document showed up no the world bank document did not show up I clicked on this, and it did not – it went to the URL because I told you all about Google, but when I clicked on the other one, it did not take me to a new window. It got rid of this window. So let's see.
we are going to do the saving of this. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, SACOM is going to be looking for people. Do not contact us yet. Look at the date. This is the 2nd of December. We will be putting something up by the 5th of December, okay? Letting you guys know of what's available. People have been asking how can they help. We will explain exactly how you can help. We'll explain exactly what we do. We'll explain exactly how we operate. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we get people, and they only come to SACOM because they want access to the information that I give. They want access to help themselves. We're not looking for people who are out there to help themselves. We're looking for people who are out there to help other people, who want to help their neighbor. Okay, if you have no skills, then you need not apply because we don't have time to train you. Okay, we're going to tell you exactly what we're looking for. So just please stay tuned. Okay. Uh, and then that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Got to go. So we're going to do our non-judicial. Oh, R-E-C-L. Okay. These documents eventually will be up online. They won't be up today, but eventually they'll be up online for all of you. But that's why I'm showing you where I'm going, so you can do the same thing. I, You see, I tell you, when I did it on my cell phone, I was impressed because it takes me to what I'm looking for. It doesn't take me all around the world the same, I mean, uh, the same, you know, stuff. So it doesn't do that. Okay, affecting conversion of rental properties. When a tenant shareholder, we don't care about that one for the most part. Um, foreclosure, housing, self-help, non-judicial foreclosure process, nope. Uh, I'm looking for a summary proceedings. This is in and outside of court. This is the non-judicial part. This is foreclosure, housing, self-help, California, CA.gov. This is the court in California. This is their website. California. All right, but I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that things go well with all of you. Take care of yourselves. Stay out of trouble. And that new variant that you guys have been hearing about, you're going to keep hearing about it because that's intentional. And they talk about it being benign. Wait until they introduce that trigger that I was telling you guys about. This is this one is designed to infect everybody. That's why they've been pushing for everybody to get vaccinated. People who get vaccinated are still catching this variant. It's not providing a defense. Well, they're only having mild symptoms. This is not about symptoms. This is about the fact that they have it, which will break down their immune system to make it easier. Okay? Make it easier. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. It'll make it easier for people to get sick and make it easier for them to be infected by this new thing that's going to come around that's going to really cause a lot of problems. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have to let you go. I want to thank you guys. I have work to do, so take care of yourselves. It's the Isley Brothers, y'all. Got work to do. Renee and Angela is going to take me out of here, and I hope, see, I didn't say Regina. Renee and Angela take us out, and I hope that all of y'all take care. We'll talk. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>